Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another review of the 2022 New Japan Cup. I am here to talk about night nine of the tournament, which took place on March 15th. I am, of course, the natural Chris Black of the Saturday Night Slamcaster podcast, independent professional wrestling, and everybody's favorite narcissist. And if you caught my last review, uh, remember, I'm kind of thinking that this is kind of a bit of a drag going over all these undercard matches. I'm still going to do it for you guys, but I do think I'm going to switch things up when we get to the quarterfinals. Uh, so on today's review, I'm going to have six undercard matches, two tournament matches, which again, I feel like they should have just stuck with the whole four tournament matches at a time. Um, of course, that would have cut the tournament a little bit shorter. The tour would have been shorter, so maybe that's not what they want to do. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right to these matches. In the opening match, we have Tiger Mask and Honma defeating Oiwa and Taguchi. This was just a match. No previews for any upcoming matchups. Um, and as the tournament winds down, there'll be less preview matchups, and they are just undercard matches. Oiwa getting in some ring time with Vets, uh, so he's taking his beating and loving it. Taguchi tags in and does his butt attacks on both Tiger Mask and Honma. Oiwa tags back in, so the match will be coming to a close. Him and Taguchi double-team Honma. Oiwa puts on a single leg crab, but it's broken up by Tiger Mask. Honma puts on a full crab, leans back, and Oiwa taps out. Uh, better luck next time, kid. Next match, we have El Phantasmo and Taiji Ishimori defeating Ujita and Master Wado. Master Waddle is still not over. I'm more impressed with Fujita. Ishimori is back with his goofball shit because he's with El Phantasmo. Uh, perhaps they will be taking the tag team titles off of Master Waddle and Taguchi in the near future. Hopefully. I feel bad for Taguchi for tagging with Master Waddle, but maybe he's trying to teach him a thing or two about personality. Anyway, uh, the back rake spot has run its course. Um, they can just stop doing it now. I'm over it. They finish off the match with a springboard knee drop into the UFO to finish off Fujita. ELP and Ishimori picks up the victory. Master Wado gets beast down post-match, and Taguchi comes out to save his partner. So, again, maybe ELP and Taiji Ishimori will be challenging for the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships of Master Wado and Taguchi. Only time will tell. Next match, we have Gato, Owens, and Bad Luck Fale defeating the team of the Gruels of Destiny and Jado. So another match between the outcasts of Bullet Club versus current Bullet Club members. Uh, GOT attacks them as they're walking to the ring, not wasting any time. Once the ref gets things under control, Jado is taking the heat from the Bullet Club, Gato runs in like a weasel to get his licks in on Jado. Tagaloa is the first one tagged in and puts down Fale, but it's not for long as one shoulder tackle drops his momentum. Gato tags back in and so does Jado, but Chase Owens jumps Jado from behind, stopping any possibility of a fair fight between the 33-year-old former friends. Jado is at the mercy of Gato as he comes in with brass knucks, but Tamatanga slips in and takes it from Gato, running him away, leaving Jado in the ring who gets C-triggered from Chase and steals a victory. Again, this is far from over between these guys. Next match, we have the team of Hanare, Will Ospreay, and Great Khan defeating Takamichi Nuku, El Desperado, and Zack Sabre Jr., I'm looking forward to this Zack Sabre Jr. and Great Okan rematch from the G1 where Zack beat him. They opened the matchup with some good hole-for-hole hole technical wrestling. Again, I cannot wait for this matchup between these two. Will Ospreay is the next one tagged in and mixes it up with Zack Sabre Jr., which could be a quarterfinal match. We shall see. Zack Sabre Jr. is able to get away and tag out. El Desperado comes in and goes after Will Ospreay. Hanari is in the match next and gives El Desperado them hands, but is overwhelmed by Suzuki Goon and is taken down by Taka Michinuku. In the end, Hanari hits the streets of rage on Michinuku and gets the pin and the win. Zack Sabre Jr. and Great Khan are tied up on the outside trying to submit each other and has to be separated. Again, that match buildup has been great so far, so looking forward to it. Next match, we have the team of Bushi, Shingo Tagaki, Sonata, and 
Amuro Takahashi defeating the team of Dick Togo, Sho, Yujiro Takahashi, and Evil. Up to this point, Bushi is the only member of LIJ who has been eliminated from the tournament, and Evil is the only member still in it <laughs> on his side. Uh, Himura will be facing Evil in the third round, so we get a bit of a preview with these two. Evil's new group against his old buddies. <laughs> of course, House of Torture strikes first, strikes hard, and they show no mercy. In the melee, Sho and Dick Togo are put in the Paradise Lock. Sonata should just left them in there instead of letting them out with the kick to the ass. Bushi falls victim to the old thrown into the turnbuckle, but let's remove the turnbuckle pad spot. <laughs> Homaro gets the hot tag and is firing on all cylinders. Shingo gets in, but is quadruple teamed by the House of Torture. The ref didn't see the choke by the Garrett, but he's able to power out. Dick Togo falls victim to the pumping bomber and is pinned. In the next match, we have the team of Yo, Goto, and Okada defeating the team of Daoki, Suzuki, and Tai Chi. Uh, once again, there's nothing at stake in this match. Okada and Tai Chi had their match last night. Okada is the only man left in his side that's in the cup. And everyone on the other side is also out. Uh, Goto picks up the victory with uh, GTW and Daoki to end this match. All right, let's get into third round matchups. Uh, first match, we have Jeff Cobb defeating Yoshihashi. The Great Okan and Will Ospreay is out at ringside for support because, of course, they do not interfere in these matches. Yoshi outsmarts Cobb by beating him to come to the outside and is able to gain control. He realizes that he can't outmuscle him, so he has to outsmart him. This works for a short period, but Cobb caught him slipping, knocking him to the outside into the barricade. Cobb is throwing Yoshi around like he's a child and is in total control of this match. Yoshi has to go after the leg of Cobb to keep him at bay. Cobb's strength is what allows him to re regain control at any moment. Yoshi pulls out a destroyer on Cobb, but he is unable to maintain control of the match and is put back down after a power bomb. Yoshi is doing everything he can to stay in this match, surviving a strike exchange and staying on the leg of Jeff Cobb. Yoshi has great fire and makes it believable that he can win, even when it's clear that he's the underdog. Cobb is able to fight off his attacks, but Yoshi finally falls victim to the tour of the islands and is pinned. I like how New Japan keeps their matches competitive, but honestly, certain matchups shouldn't go as long as they do. If Jeff Cobb is able to hang with Okada, but struggles to put someone like Yoshi away, and by struggle I mean it takes longer to finish him off than it should, then why is he seen as competition to Okada? Anyway, just a small gripe. Will Ospreay catches Cobb admiring the cup trophy again. Uh, where are they going with this? Are they going for a United Empire tournament final, or this is just cause some stir? Uh, only time will tell. It seems to be a famous phrase of mine during this tournament. Oh boy, here's the main event. Tetsuya Naito defeating Hiroshi Tanahashi. Now, going into this match, I needed to see some intensity between these two uh, in order for this match to be interesting to me. Uh, Naito takes his normal tranquilo approach in the beginning. He even offers a handshake, but Tanahashi uh, puts him in a headlock after shaking his hand. This is a very slow pace as they trade control of the match back and forth. This is a typical Tanahashi Naito match, complete with all the spots that we're familiar with. Uh, Ten minutes in, and Naito finally starts to turn up the aggression a bit. The pace picks up, but there's still not enough intensity. Naito shoved red shoes into the ropes, knocking Tanahashi down from attempting a high fly flow. Tanahashi avoids a destino and executes three twist and shouts in a row. Exciting, but intense, no. A uh, brutal main event? Stop, Kevin Kelly. That is not the word I would use to describe this match. It is everything but brutal. I'm not going to say it was a bad match. It wasn't a bad match at all. It's just a lot slower than I would have liked it to have been and not as intense. But that just seems to be typical on these types of matchups with Tanahashi and Naito. I don't know. Maybe they just don't have good chemistry. Hell, maybe it's just, I don't know. Maybe it's just lately they're just... Ooh, anyway, in the end... Tanahashi hits an aces high, goes up for the high fly flow, but he misses as Naito moves, and then he quickly rolls him up for the pin. 
a very anticlimactic win after a very slow paced match. I know it sounds like I'm a little disappointed and I might be, but I don't know. I, maybe I, maybe they should have had Cobb and Yoshihashi main event this match. I understand that due to Naito being Naito and Tanahashi being Tanahashi that they deserve the main event spot, but I got to tell you, Jeff Cobb and Yoshihashi was a lot more exciting. It just was. But um, that's going to do it for today, folks. Thank you for tuning in. If you have enjoyed my reviews, please take the time to hit that subscribe button on the way out. Ring the notification bell so you are alerted when new episodes are uploaded. Follow me on all social media. Links are in the description. That'll take you to my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And while you're at it, links are also there so you can subscribe to the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast, to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and join our Facebook group. I'll be back for more third round matches. And again, I might change up how I do these reviews once we get to the quarterfinals. I'm going to gut through the last two nights of the third round matches. But again, when it gets to the quarterfinal matches, I'm going to change things up a little bit. Until next time, come get slammed.